What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and today I'm gonna to give you a little quick start guide. I have another video that's an in-depth uh, configuration guide on how to configure Sunshine, but in this one, I'm just gonna go over the quick nitty gritty way to get everything working, which it should work out of the box, as well as what things you may need to configure along the way. Before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. And that's a pretty bad number. So if you like this one, be sure to click on that sub or thanks button below. Speaking of thanks, huge shout out to Miss Modab. Thank you so much for being a channel supporter. If you want to become a channel member and get shout outs in videos like this, click on that join button below. So onto the sunshine uh, configuration. Everything should work locally on your own network as is. Uh, the way you get it started is you jump into your uh, Moonlight client on your phone or other device. Uh, it'll search your local network, find your computer. You're gonna click connect. It's gonna ask for a pin or it's gonna give you a pin. And then on your computer, you're gonna go to pin and you're gonna enter that number here and you're good to go. Now, to configure and actually adjust this, uh, you're gonna wanna change the name to something you're gonna remember. So I changed mine to Sunshine Gaming PC. And essentially nothing else here needs to be uh, changed too much. Um, I would enable UPnP to make sure that you can access it from anywhere. And if you plan to uh, access the UI outside of your home, like you wanna actually configure this from somewhere else, then you wanna enable um, access to the web UI. Uh, you can also choose specific resolutions. So if you have a Stream Deck, for example, you can enter 1280 by 800 here. Uh, so if I just enter 1280 by 800, uh, that will give us the chosen resolution for the Steam Deck, and then of course frames per second. Also for game pads, we have our PS4 gamepad or Xbox 360 gamepad. This is which one's going to be emulated on the host, so that's like, what's the game going to think you're using? So uh, generally, uh, Xbox 360 is the one to use, but if you're actually using a PS4 gamepad, maybe you want to have the controls mapped properly there uh, in game. So we'll hit apply and save. And then there's nothing to edit in files. Under input, the only thing you would really need to change here is the uh, mouse and keyboard input. If you have guests on the system and you don't want them to have remote access to your uh, whole computer, uh, you could just enable the gamepad. But some games do require uh, mouse and keyboard and are emulated in gamepads, so I generally just leave this on. Uh, the key repeat delay is kind of like a turbo, so if you hold down a button, it's gonna repeat over and over. Uh, however many milliseconds you enter here. And otherwise, you can hit save. Audio and video, none of this really needs to be saved. Everything's gonna be automatically chosen for you. In my configuration video, I show you how to adjust this if you'd like to. Under advanced, we leave the port as is. If you plan to um, use this outside of your local network, you will need to open this port on your firewall and in your router. If we scroll down, you'll see that origin pin allowed. Uh, we wanna allow this uh, anywhere if you plan to use this outside your home because you wanna be able to enter that pin. If you're not home, you obviously can't enter it um, on the computer. So you wanna be able to access this from outside your network. So enter anyone may access slash pin. You're still gonna need your Sunshine password, so it's not like it's completely open to the public, um, but you'll need to enter your Sunshine name and password, and then it'll let you enter the pin. Uh, your IP address will automatically be detected, so, so you don't need to enter that. We'll just go ahead and save. And then we can just jump into whichever type of graphics card we have. So you can feel free to uh, move forward in the video as you see fit, depending on which one you have. I'm gonna start with NVIDIA. In NVIDIA, generally the default settings are just fine. What I recommend is starting at a higher quality and then slowly moving down until you get the performance you'd like. Uh, that way you're not just settling for medium if you could uh, get better quality if your network and your computer supports it. So generally maybe start at uh, P6, see if it works well for you and then drop it down. Um, I'm gonna leave mine on medium. For NVENC tune, ultra low latency is what we want because we don't want any kind of input lag or latency there. For the bit rate, uh, they recommend constant bit rate, but I use variable. Um, if you have network issues with variable, switch it to constant. Otherwise you can save some network uh, bandwidth by using variable. Um, and then for the quality here, you can let it decide automatically, but I like to choose higher quality and that should be it. 
If you have issues with these settings, um, you can adjust this to the faster decode. That'll get rid of some of the input delay or the lag. And you can adjust the quality preset uh, if your CPU or GPU or network can't handle the bandwidth. Moving on to Intel QuickSync. If you're using the iGPU, we can adjust the settings here. Again, we can choose higher quality or faster decode. I like to choose higher quality and then adjust the uh, QuickSync preset starting at good or better quality. Uh, we start here and then if it's not uh, up to speed, if it's kind of like laggy or um, you're getting some input delay, then you can go ahead and raise this up until it's uh, to your needs. And if uh, you know it's running at 60 frames a second and it looks pretty good, you can leave it there without having to sacrifice anything. So go ahead and hit apply and save and you're good to go. Now for AMD. AMD, we want to basically choose uh, either quality or speed. Um, balance tends to do really, really well here, but uh, if you want to try it, you can choose quality first and then uh, lower that down if it doesn't work for you. Because obviously, if we can get that great quality and still play pretty well and not have any input lag, then we want that. But if you get any input lag or delay, go ahead and switch it back to balanced and you should be fine. For the AMF rate control, uh, the default is latency constrained variable bitrate, and this is generally recommended, and it's going to essentially check your latency at all times or at certain ping rates, and based on that, set the bitrate of um, what your network can handle. This is a great way to not use as much uh, network bandwidth as you would if you're in like a menu, uh, so variable bitrate would have that really low. And then when action does start happening and it jumps up, it's actually not going to jump up too high that your network actually lags out or anything. So this is generally a good one to keep uh, set right there. For AMF usage, you want to leave this at ultra low latency. It may be tempting to try these other ones, but this isn't actually for live streaming. This is for recording and such. So ultra low latency is for streaming, and I recommend that. For pre-analysis, I recommend disabling. And then for the AMF decoder, by default, it's on auto, but I like to try higher quality first, and if it gives issues, then switching. And finally, software encoding. When would we want to use software encoding? Well, let's say we have a really good CPU and not a great GPU. Uh, you would want to leave your GPU to actually work on the game itself and render as many game frames as possible. And then you could just set software encoding on and let your CPU handle it because it has like 20 extra threads on the side, right? Um, so for SW Tune, you don't need to change this. Uh, the rest of these are for recording, not for streaming. So zero latency is for streaming. And then for the SW presets, it depends on your uh, the power of your CPU. Uh, generally, I recommend starting at medium, even though the default is super fast. Uh, the quality of the image is going to be a little bit lower here. So if you start at medium and then um, see how it looks, see how it feels, if you notice some delay or lag, drop it down a step and try again until you find um, a preset that works well for you. And that's it. You've configured Sunshine. All you need to do is go on your uh, client device, uh, search your local network, find the server, tap on it. It's going to give you a pin. You're going to go over here and click on pin. And you're going to get to enter that. And it's going to give you full access and control on the client device. That's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Peace. It's Mike the Tech, Mike the Tech, huh? Mike the Tech, the architect, huh? Mike the Tech, Mike the Tech, yeah. Mike the Tech, the architect, huh?